Hello and welcome back to War of the Human Tanks Altair. So apparently, I need to be le uh, <laughs> I need to be looking out for some kind of module that I'm going to be given, and I'm not supposed to use it or anything. I'm just supposed to hold on to it. I don't know. I mean, that's pretty easy. I barely use my modules anyway. Um, but I have no idea what the hell it means. I have no idea what the hell the pure golden helmet does. I was only using it because the uh, AI were using it, and I was like, oh, what, how, what, how did that match happen? And I still don't know. But that video hasn't been released yet. Someone will probably tell me. Someone will tell me how that, like, what the hell happened. <laughs> In the meanwhile, we need to assemble two groups and make a uh, new, um, a new fight tank. I hope that we didn't lose out on the um, on getting those two shock tanks that we were given because we let them be destroyed. I'm hoping that that isn't a thing. Bring that up a couple of times because in the in in this this goes all the way back to the original Kessin, where if someone like betrayed their force um, and they got defeated in the battle, they likely wouldn't like be on your team. <laughs> and it was so it was um. You know, it kind of goes all the way back to that, to where, like, I feel like if you are given a special tank, that it's not going to join you unless, you know, it lives. That sort of deal. Because that's, uh, I mean, that's pretty, like, they kind of can't join you if they're dead, right? <laughs> I mean, any ally in any game, they kind of can't join you if they're dead. Um, it's just how it has to be. <laughs> But let's continue with the cavern. I am curious as to what is going on with the cavern. Uh, the story has been getting pretty cool, I think. Um, so let's continue forward. I'm hoping that my theories all come true and that I'm a genius. That's what I'm hoping for, but I really doubt it. <laughs> it seems like they're all stripped of, of their modules already, so... Screw that then, I suppose. All the tanks I'm using, at least, so... That just goes off. Modules destroyed, more modules destroyed. Let's start moving up. Neither... Neither Thyssen found anything. Alright, I should have attacked forward with them. Oh, hi everybody! How, how, are, how, how are you guys? Luckily, Pokari's powered up. Which means that she could hit a lot of tanks here. And I guess that she's gonna go for all of this. Boom, 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 boom. Alright, you move up. Attack forward. Uh oh. Their grape has destroyed my grape. Ooh. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, That's kind of cool. Do, 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 do. It's like, this is where your grape was killed. This was where the enemy was signed. You don't even have to remember stuff anymore. If you don't want to. I mean, I'd still remember things, because it'd be too freaking hard for me to pull up that log every time. Okay! God damn. Alright, there's an enemy right ahead of us. Uh, yep, of course. Mm. I'm trying to kind of push behind them. But I'm not really able to. Which means I might lose a punch here. Alright. Pokari can not destroy the tank. She can destroy that one. I think I have to let Pokari uh, take out the Ichi Natani. Oh, it was a Niamh. 
Ah, we're being shot in our spawn. Why do they always do that? I'm gonna go out on this little search here. I didn't find anything. Oh, I found something. Let's see if there's any more of them kind of hanging out near our spawn area. Does not seem like it. Alright, sniper team, are you ready to fire? Sniper team is ready to fire. Sniper team, destroy. Alright, sniper team. Move up and destroy. I know I'm putting them in danger, but... It's, uh, it's to kind of get rid of those before they can launch a bunch of missiles. So the snipers are a little bit in danger. Um, I'll take up. Oh, I think I just blew myself up. Oops. I meant to just shoot the grape, but I failed. Um, I mean, no, that was completely planned. And every part about that went beautifully. Just as I had foreseen it. Move up to here. Shoot this one up. you hit the side and check that out. Nothing? Uh, that must be, uh, their control tank firing. Athesans. That sucks. Everything's been destroyed. Wow. At least I know you're here. Uh, if only I had that other tank be right beside you. Oh, hi. Um, thanks for helping me finish off this one, but I mean, you're an idiot. Wow, thanks for helping me finish off even more of your team. Moron. Alright, let's move on up. We need to re, uh, re-see her. If I had to guess, it's probably mirrored on the other side. So we're going to start moving Rara up over here. No, not attack. Just move on up. And, yeah, I don't know how, pure, how the helmets work. <laughs> yep, it is mirrored. Hey, like I am a genius or something. No, I just... just and just used to their map design. Because they're fans of symmetry, like me. <laughs> oh, goodness. So because you attacked, I'm just gonna, you know, try and blow up parts of your body. Hope you don't mind. Um, I just think it'd be fun. Ha ha. Ha. I laugh at you. Let's see if we can finish this off. We did. Boom. Gone. Should be 6% left. Yep. All the snipers are ready. We just need to see the idiot. Moving away. Because that tank costs money. Rara here doesn't cost shit, so... Um, I only need to move up one. But I will move up two. So I can hit that far end. Wow! Damn. I might be able to kill it with the Chappy, but it's like, why bother, you know? It's not going to destroy a sniper or anything. All it's going to do is destroy the Rora, so... Like, I have, I have no reason to put the Chappie into a dangerous position where it can be destroyed. Mm, 
Hey, guy. Goodbye. And I finally get a wipeout bonus, too. Swell. I'm now wealthy. Yeah, no storyline for that battle. That kind of... Uh, that pisses me off. I want to know the story. I don't want to play your stupid fights. I want to know your story now. You've got me. Right where you want me. That's a pretty easy battle to do. Like, I'm a little bit disappointed in the caliber of my opponents on that battle. It seemed like the, they were just trying to have a bunch of control tanks, and it's like, who, who cares, really? I can just outmaneuver you guys. Once again, proving why interceptors are worthless. Ha <laughs> ha! Because I can outmaneuver enemies. Let's create a save file. Outside of the missions. And then we'll go to the next floor. The cavern of Fuji. Floor 62. Great Cavern 20, er, 62nd floor. A quick assault is the best strategy. You mean the strategy I always use. Use it now. Oh. Alright, this is a little bit weird. This one might take me multiple tries. If it's anything like the last time we had to do this. Let's see if they have a control tank. Yep. Just thought I would, you know, make sure. Alright, team. They have control tanks. That means that we have to beat them. Like, really. You know, we have to actually be beating them with real power. We can't be screwing up this time. Alright? I know that that's hard for you guys. I know that's hard for me. We usually sacrifice a plethora of you. But today, it's a different day. Today is the day that we do not sacrifice a single soul. We go in there, we win. End of story. No sacrificing. We even have Ludwig. We can do this. I have faith in us. And by that I mean we can't do this. I have zero faith in us. We're gonna fuck this all up. <laughs> I don't wanna assemble I wanna I wanna deploy Ludwig. Alright, team. Prepare to fuck up. <laughs> uh, I should develop a yes. No, you know what? We're bringing a sniper because of how uh how I feel about them personally. Okay. The fuck up, Bill. Where I mess everything up. No scouts. Probably not a helpful thing. I oh, don't no, no, enemy destroyed modules. Your pumpkin destroyed modules. I'm not even gonna move. I'm just gonna hit you. Alright. Go straight. Oh, these things are actually kind of powerful. They are the equivalent of, um, of the powered up Pokari, it looks like. Because they, they can attack in the four squares as well. The enemy's tanks are very fast. Oh. Oh, my Nagisa, no! But are they fast enough to combat me? That's the question. I think if I wouldn't have went to that side thinking, oh, maybe, you know. We'd better all... Oh, shit. Ichi no Tani. The bodies are piling up. Hi. Bye. I think we had double my tanks, which is unfair. 
Pumpkin. Advance. Fire. Might convince them that we're not over there. If I'm going to be hitting this tank, I want to hit the place right behind it as well. Like, I want there to be no survivors. No survivors. Kill! 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 Yay! They only had two command tanks in the back. We killed them. We win the battle. We win the battle of just charge rapidly into the, into the enemy's side and hope for the best. Yes! What a strategic win we've had here today. I'm very proud of everyone who took part in this. Oh god. Well, um, I mean, this would be enough for an episode, but it's like, I'm not sated. I haven't gotten any storyline yet, so I'm gonna keep going. So, Great Cavern, 63rd floor. Give me some storyline here. Great Cavern, 63rd floor. Terrain is co complex, so deploy tanks which can maneuver the environment effectively. Now the idea with the Ludwigs is they're not going to move as a unit. They're going to kind of split up a little bit as best they can. And that way, you know, only one will be able to be killed at a time is the hope. So we'll see what happens. But they're very fast tanks. They have a good attack. And I feel pretty good about them. I don't really feel good about Ellie, but Ellie's like a bullet sponge that people tend to fall for, so... I like that about it. Let's see if this works better. I, I feel like it will. Because Ludwig is a very powerful tank. Bunch. Uh, again, kind of staggering. Hmm. Hold this one back for now. Just feels so much like a chess game. Like you're kind of just like you're basing your strategy around what your opponent's doing, but you don't actually know what their strategy is. So it's even worse than chess. It's like you're just sitting there, like, okay, so I think that this is what's happening. You're just trying to work with what you got. It's so hard. Where are the tanks that are clearly advancing on us? And Sora's. Alright, one of them's dead. They're at 68. I'm still at 100. But that can change rapidly. Looks like a... Maybe... Perhaps. Ah, oh, goodness. Alright, it's your turn to move up. We're gonna make sure that there is uh, no enemy tanks anywhere near my positionings. She's more of a threat, I think. Because I can kill this one right off the bat here. 
Do these, uh, do the Midnights come with evasive modules? Let me check real fast. No. So I actually, I could actually have just brought in giant missile-based units to come and destroy these guys, couldn't I have? Because they don't, they clearly don't have interceptors. Hmm. But they do have speedy, speedy tanks. Starts moving forward with these. Hmm. Just trying to make sure no one slipped through because I saw a couple of those. Uh, time has passed, and it's like where, who, who's moving? You know, who's who's the one who's moving that's causing the time to pass? Oh, they did have an interceptor. Never mind that last thought, then. I think this will end it. Because I, I think I got three com command tanks. No? Okay, then the one on the far... the one, Like, it has to be on the far left. Their last command tank. I would think. Unless I already destroyed the left one. Nope. Yeah, so this will end the battle right here. I don't need to go and run all the way over there and deal with their stupid control tank. Which is pretty nice. Oh, it didn't. Crap. Their last command tank. <laughs> she was on the offensive the entire time. Oh my god. Alright, it's not worth that. It's, it's not worth the sacrifice. I'll get her. Don't worry. I got this. Okay, I don't got this. Don't worry. I got this. With the help of the log! Uh, the log didn't make sense to me reading it. I'm confused. Where is this tank? There we go. Okay. Totally should have just killed that other thing and got the white blood bonus. I mean, really. But no, I don't wanna. The human tank fought for her beloved superior. But what is he fighting for? Countless memories intertwine to shape his battle. It wouldn't be fair if he wasn't happy at the end. Her beloved superior did his best. Hello, you, so you came again? Yes. Her superior could not stand up. Ever since her maintenance, he could never stand up again. <laughs> you should have gone outside and played with the rest. You became my superior. I want to be beside you, Lieutenant. He found her collapsed on the 62nd floor and repaired her. From then on, he could not stand up anymore. She believed herself to be the cause, perhaps out of guilt. He became her superior, as she did not have one. That brought her more happy that, that brought her more happiness than anything. Even you, Lieutenant. <coughs> Lieutenant, wait just a moment. I'll bring some water. She hurried and prepared a cup of water. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Did I miss something? A quiet. I can't read. This is horrible. A quiet breeze. A quiet breeze blew in from the window. The wind gently embraced her superior her superior's body. Yet it felt as even as if even such a weak draft could blow him away. We're so deep underground, but the wind is so calm. Strange, isn't it? Yes. You're a control tank, aren't you? Yes. Who was your creator? I'm sorry, I don't remember. A tank that could destroy all of the enemy forces' enhanced arms. You're a very impressive tank. Lieutenant? I just thought, if there were more tanks like you, 
No, even more powerful tanks. Maybe you all wouldn't need to fight anymore. He was already aware that such a thing was impossible. It was Human Tank's instinct to seek out battle. Then there was only one thing he could do. However, I can't do it anymore. I can't order you to fight. Lieutenant, sorry for being such a spineless superior. No, you aren't. You're the only one I consider my superior ever since you repaired me. I'm sorry. Don't worry. You're a great lieutenant. You made me lots of friends. I suppose. What can I do to fix you? What will allow you to move again? What will allow you to move again? Ah, oh, I was going to mention this. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Now the game has ruined it. So, the reason that Fuji is kind of like a hotbed for, um, like, no one went into Fuji except for, like, very specific researchers, and they were down there doing, like, research because there, there was a, a concentration of radiotoxic particles in Fuji. Um, so I was going to bring up the fact that he had essentially been down there in Fuji with this concentrated radiotoxic particles that would probably be hurting him. So, I think, I mean, I mean that, that's what it's saying right here. I was exposed to a concentrated mass of particles. I probably won't heal. Yes, you will. You'll be able to move again. I know. Let's ask God. God will be able to fix you. <laughs> I'm afraid it's impossible, even for the captain. No, it isn't. You'll be... <coughs> Blah. She felt terrible seeing her superior disabled. What's funny is that Chiyoko actually might have been able to help him out. I mean, she... So, uh, it, it, we're 40 episodes in. Um, if you haven't watched the original, and, like, this is spoiling stuff for you, then that's on you, okay? But Shotaro was uh, mortally wounded, and Chiyoko essentially used human tank parts to keep him alive. So, in all honesty, she might be able to repair Yushigawa, as weird as that is to say. Um, because she is, like, obviously really, really talented. And I don't, I mean, we don't know what's wrong with Yushigawa. We just assume maybe it's radiotoxic poisoning. Um, we don't, we haven't been told if he's, like, how, what, what actually has happened to him. But, if it's radiotoxic poisoning poisoning, then having him be part human tank should solve that. I don't know. It made her feel very helpless. She did not know why. Was it because he wouldn't give her orders, or was it because he wouldn't praise her? It did not occur to her at all, however, that many times in the past, her superior, her superior had experienced the same emotions she was currently feeling. Is that you, Toka? If you're looking for Midnight, she headed to the upper floors. So it is you. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I'm, like, really dying. You're pushing yourself too hard. It'll be too depressing for her if I don't. You don't need to feel pity for human tanks. <laughs> That's definitely something Toka would say. That's something any human tank would say. A quiet breeze blew in from the window. The wind gently embraced XXXX's body. Yet it felt as if even such a weak draft could blow him away. It's Ushigawa, goddammit. I went to the lowest floor the other day. Did you see that tank? I need water. What do you plan on doing with a tank like that? She's my ultimate masterpiece. Ultimate masterpiece? You're out of your mind! I knew you would say that. You should just get some rest. Toka, I have a favor to ask. Will you listen? I'll listen, but I won't make any promises. Have you noticed the true nature of the Dark Tanks? You're the one who made them, Lieutenant. The answer is obvious. <laughs> then you're confident you know. 
the lower levels of the great cavern of Fuji were nothing more than a storm of radiotoxic particles before. The current density of the particles is proof. Correct. Are the dark tanks absorbing the particles? Yes. Although other tanks can all also absorb particles, the dark tanks are on a completely different scale. I have water here. Give me a moment. They're going to be taken advantage of. Insert coughing for him. <laughs> I breathe in while I drink, okay? It happens. Some of us make the same cardinal errors multiple times. <laughs> you really are sharp, Toka. If those dark tanks make it to the surface, they're going to be captured by humans who will exploit them. They'll make a human tank that will be able to consume an entire city. That's not what I'm concerned about. Cough. I won't be kind. I'm concerned about the rest of the human tanks. Should I stop the dark tanks? If they all try to go outside. Lieutenant. Lieutenant, all you have to do is order me to fight. That's all. I can't. Why? Because you only have one. Because you only have one superior. The person that gave you that scarf. You're right. This was Toka's memory. He was the only one who understood her in this false world, deep underground. He knew Toka's superior was not a god, just a human. He knew the story behind the red scarf. Even if his superior was regarded as God, if he couldn't tell the difference between illusion and reality anymore, he would still be able to fight just a little more. He fought by teaching Toka how to fight. I won't be kind. Human Tanks. Memories of War. Toka remembered. That was why. Great Cavern of Fuji, 70th floor. This would make a fucking splendid background for, uh, for Steam. Just tossing that out there. Eighth Hologram Area. Hologram Core. Surrender, Dark Tanks. She fought. There was no reason. It was in their nature to. She was, however, given a goal by him. We must make it to the surface. We'll leave this place and search for God. So you won't stop. Then prepare yourselves. So again... Alright, this is a 50 minute episode, so I'm gonna have to cut out something, but hopefully it'll be a little bit like a, around 35, 40. Um, again, he's referring to her as Captain. Now, there's no reason he'd refer to her as Captain if he knew the true nature of the operation and what had happened, because he would know she would have been demoted to second lieutenant. So for him to refer to her as Captain means that he thinks she is dead. He thinks Chioko's dead. There's no way around it. He thinks she's dead. He thinks the Dihone Corpse is wiped out and that Shioko's dead. And this is further point into like into like this is further referenced by the fact that he said, I can't order you around, Toka. You have one superior and one superior only. And like that would be out of his respect and reverence of Chioko that he would say that to Toka. Like he would be like, I can't I can't you know, I can never take over that position. You know, I, I'm not the person that she was. Um, so, essentially now, I guess what it is... Uh, there's there's just so much. It, I, I feel like... I feel like that's the story. I feel like he made the Dark Tanks because he wanted to stop there being, you know, 
I mean, he even said it himself. He wants to, he wants there to stop being war. And the way to do that, and this is this goes back to the first game where um, one of the endings referenced it. If all of the radio toxic particles in the world are absorbed, no human tank will exist anymore. Without human tanks existing, there's no more like proxy fighting, which would make, um, which would make humans have to fight humans again, which would potentially end war. But then again, on a different scale, he seems to be more worried about the other human tanks. Like he seems more worried about human tanks than he seems worried about humans, and I think that's because um, of that strat, like that backstabbery. Um, well, I mean, ultimately, we're going to see, but he's slowly fading out as a character at this point. He's starting to die. So, we don't have much longer that we got to try to figure this thing out before the game just abruptly probably tells us. Um, but apparently there's some crazy tank that we're going to see. And when we see that, everything might come to light. But we need to see that tank first, and see what's going on. In the meanwhile, Toka is trying to stop these dark tanks, and I feel, and this is something that I feel too, I feel like Toka's trying to stop these dark tanks from going and looking for God, because A, they can be exploited like she said, but B, I think that she thinks Chiyoko's dead as well. And that was why she was regarding Ushigawa as her superior, even though he wasn't her true superior. And she understood that because she has enhanced intelligence. But I think that she believes Chiyoko is dead as well. And that's part of the reason why she's so adamant that the dark tanks can't be allowed to, uh, you know, go to the surface. Because not only would they be very bad for the surface, but they would never find Chiyoko because she's dead. That would That's Toka's mentality. Even though Chiyoko wasn't dead at all. But, um... That's what I'm thinking so far, right now. That's my theory. And that's also going to be the end of the episode. We're at 55 minutes, about. Hopefully I can cut out some things and maybe make this go a little bit shorter. I mean, they are generic battles, so I can, maybe I can cut out like the deployment phases. Uh, I don't know. 